Right, start. Oh, it's gonna bloody. Should I wear the glasses on this one? I don't wear the glasses. Wear the glasses. Wear, put the glasses on. This is called The Heart of Hacks. American Advisors. American Advisors. I'll take the glasses off. I can, I can read this here. Channel 7 Choppers. Hoover hanging from cameras. 2014. I was called in. A poet had gone rogue in the depths of the western suburbs. Set herself up as a literary power. Self-proclaimed god to the locals. Terrorising allies. Enemies and non-combatants alike. I was called in. Having been born and raised in the western suburbs. My objective, walk my mum's dog. Remove target with extreme prejudice. One megalomaniac. Poet. Shelley. Kurtz would have been the target's name if this was set in another age, but in this age of gender equality, her name was Shelley. She had to be nullified. I departed from the Fitzroy Library, made my way to the gateway of the Western Suburbs, the Fusgray Station's donut stand. An operative met me with sticky fingers and sugar on their lips. What happened next? I bought half a dozen donuts and received pages covered in jam. Had to make my way to Stony Creek, up Stony Creek, to the Jonas Creek Delta, St. Norm's Pleurisy Plains. Shelley had set up a reading on the land filled hills opposite the ring road. Found the remains of visors that had set out with Shelley. A dozen black notebooks, a broken iPad and the poem on the dirty paper napkin. And I wondered what had turned Shelley from one of the brightest writers of her generation into an egotist running gigs on top of pieces of broken concrete and fridge doors. The question was, did I have a right to follow through with my assignment and walk my mum's dog at the same time? <sighs> then I met Stark standing amongst the scotch thistles and discarded green bags of smelly men's clothing swaying like the long brown grass behind him in the distance, wearing a suit, tie, glasses, and a coat on. He started telling me as his head wobbled while his glasses remained fixed in place. You, you know, Shelley has a vision. It's about bringing all writers and poets under her belligerent, belevolent rule. See... She knows what, what people should listen to and read. Man, it's psychic the way she understands the literary scene. You know, it's cosmic. Stark pulled a couple of hairs out of my scalp and started taking pictures of me with his iPhone. Stark's iPhone went sailing down the concrete banks at Jones' Creek and no one wants to keep up with those changes. So I walked away. Eventually I found Shelley. She was as thin as a no standing sign on an empty street. Shelley was sitting on a makeshift throne, a broken back Jason recliner. A patina of cigarette butt marks on the arms. She was surrounded by Red Bull addicts and male and female bogans in orange vests. As I walked up the Shelley, an evil chant began. Hun, 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 hun. Hundreds of huns. And then Shelley snarled. What do you know about words? Do you have any words? And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just walking my mum's dog. The Red Bull addicts and the male and female bogans turned on her saying, You promised! They called in a team of cool cats and the cool cats took her away to Sunshine Hospital. And I can still remember Shelley's last words.
Whatever. You're all hacks. Just hacks. <laughs> I know that's bad, but hey, come on! <laughs> it's me. I know, uh, it could have been a more dramatic conclusion to that, but uh, I can't be bothered. I like that. I hope you do too.